the passionate Piscator here, Steve, on this lovely, glorious, sunny day. Just come from Canesham Railway Station, and I'm here once again at Century Ponds. This is my second visit here. Um, my first one, if you saw my video, was very, very wet. I'm not going to have that trouble today, I don't think. Glorious blue sky. Look at that. Ah, oh, lovely. Perfect. And I'm here to see if I can catch a few fish. Which is the aim of the game for a fisherman like myself. Um, so, I'm going to get there. Take a little breather, because I'm very unfit. It's a bit of a mile walk. But I'm very unfit. <laughs> it was raining last time, and I think a little bit of rain or breeze I'll be glad of at the moment. It's very close. But... I'm going to see what I can get today. Got my float gear. I've beefed up my gear from last time. Century Ponds of the Canesham Angling Association Still Water. Let's see how I get on. a little wander around the lakes there's only one other angler fishing on the pond I'm on which is going to be the island pond having learnt my lesson from the carp pond the old pond last time I'm going to try and aim for the more silver fish today the fish the carp anyway are on the surface sunbathing as is expected on a nice warm day like today um, but I've picked a little spot just behind these um, <clears throat> laurel bushes here and uh, a lovely willow overhanging, so I have plenty of nature and wildlife around me. And it might offer some protection from the sun. I think as the sun pitches round, I'm going to be in full sun. So, first of all, I'm going to do the most important thing you can possibly do when fishing in the sun. And that's whack on a bit of the old uh, Mazzola cooking oil. Bald! a nice spray on one so it doesn't make it too greasy. I'm going to paint myself up like the Joker from Batman. Um, a lot of anglers are sun worshippers. Love a bit of sun whilst fishing and why not? It's better than sitting in the peeing rain or the freezing cold. But I think the most important thing you can possibly do is protect yourself from that sun. I um, used to be a care assistant many years back and I used to care for a chap who um, used to be a very, very keen angler. I even do the top of my head, even though I very rarely take my hat off. He used to be a very keen angler and um, he got skin cancer all across his face and had to have most of it removed. Most of his nose was removed and the side of his mouth. So he could only eat or drink through this side of his mouth here. He was a lovely, lovely, lovely man, but he never ever fished ever again because, well, he couldn't. His face was so damaged. The surgery he had done to it. Um, so protect yourself from the sun anglers. I know a lot of you, especially the carp boys, but a lot of other anglers do too like getting down the bank and taking off their top and you know getting the sun and burning but it is not good the more you protect yourself the longer you'll be able to continue fishing and that to me is one of the most important things well plus the rest of it living long lives with your family blah 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 but we're all about fishing here um you'll always see me wearing a long sleeve shirt well about 95% of the time. I'm down at Angler's Paradise, I do tend to rep a nice uh, polo, in which case I will always suntan, block my arms, I'll always do my face, and you will very, very, very rarely see me without my flat cap to protect myself. So, get the old uh, Factor 50 on, which I'm using today. Keep it topped up. You'll still get a tan, guys, don't worry. Um, 
keep your shirts on, keep a hat on. I mean, keep your shirts on anyway, because I don't know about you guys, but I hate getting to a lovely, beautiful fishery, sitting down, seeing all the carp basking in the sun and the swallows flitting around in the sky and, and absorbing myself in nature, nature bathing. And then looking across the other side of the bank, and there's a big fat guy, not half naked, sat on the opposite side of the bank, ruining the atmos entirely. Personal uh, opinion, of course. But protect yourself. Get the old Joker face paint on. Let's get fishing. <laughs> going to be quite a slow start it's quite warm i've missed the morning uh, the dawn the best time and when it, the weather starts to warm up a little bit fishing does tend to slow and i've come down at the slow time but that's no problem for me just going to keep watching the wildlife waiting for that float to dip under a float beautiful in its design it's even more beautiful in its disappearance. Or something to that effect. And that's very true. There is a very big carp <laughs> just underneath this laurel bush. I've come a bit more prepared for carp this time. But that might be a bit of a tussle if he takes the line. Apparently he's just basking in the sun. <laughs> It'd be interesting if I catch him. <laughs> but I think he knows I'm here. I think he's wise to me. Though he doesn't show it. Carp are pretty uh, clever fish. I'm sort of uh, speaking a bit more uh, quietly. Not just because there's other anglers on the lake, but also because I'm fishing two margin swims. And I don't really want to spook them when they're milling around in the water. Even me whispering now, he's just moved off. So I think I've got to be a little bit more water wary, a bit quieter. This lovely long eel is a pound on the nose. Beautiful fish. It's lovely to see eels. They have um, declined over recent years. This one I've had on a wet net and I've turned him upside down and been stroking his belly so he's a bit less wriggly. And I find that when they're a bit bigger, like this one, they're a bit less wriggly anyway. Fair old set of teeth on them. They give me a bit of a nip when I try to unhook him. But we'll get him back as quick as we can. Careful of the teeth, give him a quick kiss, we'll pop him back. Eels are quite a rarity now, especially to any sort of size, not that this one's particularly big. How about that for a long man? Yeah, it's nice enough sat in the sun here. If you suffer with um, um, mental health issues such as I do, with uh, depression and stress and anxiety, and I have been pretty stressed recently, there's nothing better than being out fishing, out in nature and relaxing and chilling. And you couldn't really get much better than this. You've got lovely, beautiful water, sunny skies, wildlife everywhere can't help but be cheerful in this sort of um this sort of weather 
and these uh, beautiful locations where you can go fishing rivers, the sea. Of course, everyone loves going down to the sea. The crashing of the waves. Oh, so relaxing. Uh, tell you what, I could almost drift off here. I'm pretty, pretty, pretty chilled out. <laughs> and that's the aim of the game. Well, actually, the aim of the game is to get a few fish. It's one of the benefits of the game. It's one of the benefits of the game. It's the hottest part of the day. Glances at float. <laughs> and the fish all but stop biting. Which is fair enough. It's too hot to move. The only thing daft enough to keep working in this sort of weather are all these bees in this bush. <laughs> this is not this is not the swim for people who don't love being in a close proximity to like a hundred bees. But if you can't beat them, you join them. If the fish are relaxing, then so should I be. And I have been relaxing. I <sighs> once, I'm quite a big Edgar Allan Poe fan. And I once came up with a little poem whilst fishing on a day very much like today. Let's see if I can remember it. Yeah, probably. Let's give it a go. Once beside a fish pond, weary, tired from slumber, eyes cast bleary, I can't but wonder. Ponder, theory, why I am happier than before. Or it could be that I'm just not thinking about it properly. If the fish are sleepy, should I really be? I don't know. Time to get that watercraft working. Now, from what I can see here, there's the odd little bubbles appearing here and there, so there are fish still moving. Not a lot you can see on the surface, but because the water clarity is not that great. There's a lot of scum on the surface from the fallen pollen and bits and pieces. But every now and then, a bird flies over. Be it a swallow or a swift or a house martin. There's actually, I think, been a few uh, sand martins go past, but they've been so quick it's been hard definitely to sell. Sometimes a pigeon goes over and the whole of the water just goes whoosh, whoosh, with fish. Hundreds and hundreds of rudd. Now, I've had a go at trying to catch those rudd and they're little buggers. But I'm not taking my, my waggler as I cast it out. Mostly because the waggler goes in bloop, and the fish scatter. But, if anyone who watched my bleak video, I say fit recently, fairly recently, beginning of spring, it's summer now, knows I have the rudd float and if this bad boy can't do the job of catching a few little teeny tiny rudd when the going is really really hard in this hot weather then absolutely nothing can so let's get this one on fish it oh, i'm gonna fish it about that far under the water it's gonna lay flat it's gonna be about that deep and i'm gonna see if i could pull out just a few little teeny tiny rudd just to keep me going until the bigger fish move in and start feeding on all this bait I've been putting in all day. Here we go guys, the patented passionate Piscator Rudd Rig, ready for action. Send her out there. Oh, oh I like, got overexcited, that's the problem. Maybe this is it though guys, 
turning a day of no fish. Well, not a day. The hottest part of a day with no fish. To the hottest part of a day. With a rut. I think I've literally just cast that into some clag. There we go. Oh. Problem is these rudders are so small. They're struggling to take the maggot. I've got to wait for a more definite bite. So that one just dropped it. Did he take the maggot there? No, he didn't. Should have left it there, Steve. Should have left it there. You're talking to yourself now. You've gone mad. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's exciting. It hasn't took the maggot. Oh, come on, baby. Lovely, ruddly. Let's get one in the net. Oh, look at this. Look at that. <laughs> look at it look at it you know when you come up with the perfect plan you've done the math you've done all the science you, it's too hot the fish aren't feeding but you can see rud on the surface but they're not taking the waggler float so you come up with your rud rig well things don't always go to plan As this fish proves. My surface rod rig is catching rod. But also perch. What are perch doing? Swimming about on the surface. Turns out, 2 plus 2 really does equal 5. Who knew? time and it worked I caught a load of rud absolute ton of rud and plenty of perch as well but inevitably I've he head back to the bottom now bottom of a lake that is with my float rod back into those two swims I was feeding up earlier it's late afternoon ish now coming up into the evening must be almost six o'clock. Um, I've had so many rud, but I wasn't bored of them. But <laughs> I just fancied a bit of a change. <laughs> uh, the chap over the other side of the lake noted how many I was catching. Um, I didn't video every single one. It would have been madness. It'd have been like the bleak video, bleak, 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 continuously. Um, then rud, 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 all over the place. But um, yeah, so we're heading back down to the bottom. Just re-rigged um, my rod up again. Oh, my word. The fish just... You wouldn't believe the fish just literally jumped out of the water and almost hit the bank by my foot. So maybe I should be fishing outside the water, not in the water. Who knows? Um, anyway, the, um, the chap over in the corner, he was here uh, at half past eight. He's gone and he caught nothing at all. He was using pellet. So my idea to use pellet is completely out the window. Not going to do that. I've tried worm for a little while. Got absolutely no results whatsoever. So I'm sticking with the maggot. Because at least I'd be able to catch some smaller fish. Hopefully. Um, over that. Um, during the time I was catching all those rud off the surface. Um, the old pond has completely filled with carp anglers. I mean every single available swim has a carp angler in it. Um, 
I'm kind of a bit pleased to know as well that they've caught absolutely nothing as well <laughs> so far. Um, but I suspect they'll fish into the evening and um, they'll probably winkle a few out, won't they? When the, well, the carp have been breeding today, so I mean, it's not a species of fish I'd be heading for, that's for sure. They're going to be busy doing other things. And, um, you know, and personally, I don't really rate uh, targeting breeding fish. Um, because they're just knackered from, well, getting down and dirty, getting fruity at the bottom of the lake, um, and I don't think that's very fair. But, you know, everyone has their own opinions and views on things, it just happens to be mine, and there's plenty of other species of fish to go catch, although I'm not really getting any at the minute. <laughs> um, the bailiff came around earlier and said there's some tension here, so I'm hoping for one of them. But, you know, a few more perch, a few more rudd, perhaps another reel. I'll be happy with that. On a really hard day. Boeing 747 going over. Um, yeah, on a really hard day, I think that um, I've done pretty well, to be honest. Caught outside the box, caught quite a few fish. Um, no record shakers yet again, which is a shame. The... Um, the sun has disappeared behind the clouds now, so um, I'm not burning to a crisp like I was earlier on. Maybe that will bring the fish on to feed a little bit. Who knows? Well, I'll know by the end of this video. It's very quickly turning into a late night eel session. <laughs> Smaller one, this one. Made a right old mess of a net. In you go. Back into the depths. Let's see if I can get off some of that eel slime. Let's have a look. And no such luck. That's going to be interesting on the train back home. <laughs> Here's a question for you viewers, <laughs> how on earth did you get eel slime out of a net? I mean, I'm doing the dog poo method here where <laughs> if you've got dog poo on your shoe, you rub it in the grass, <laughs> but it's not a foolproof method. It does work pretty well, but how on earth do you get it out? It's like bream slime, that's the same. Eel slime. Actually, that's not too bad. Maybe I figured it out. Let's give it another dunk. The old passionate piscator dunk and rub. <laughs> I'll have to do. Home James. Home James. Why do they say home James? Who the hell is James? Anyway, how did my uh, round two electric boogaloo go at uh, Century Ponds today? Did I learn from my first session? Well, I certainly came tackled up a lot better. Uh, ready for those carp which would move in and destroy me. So naturally, I didn't catch any carp. I didn't even hook one. 
uh, they were breeding quite heavily um, around the lakes uh, which I kind of almost suspected they would be to be honest so um, I didn't catch any I didn't it was a it was a very hard day um, that hot weather was just horrendous and the fish knew it um, but actually I caught quite a lot of little perch I suppose probably 30 or 40 little perch on the worm and maggot um, and during the hot part of the day oh, did I come in did I come in on top with that blooming um, rud technique it, 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 the lake just stopped absolutely stopped no fish at all and coming in with that just saved the day with the rud fishing definitely nothing big but I mean in those situations you really can't be a beggaring bit can't be begging and choosing I don't know um anyway so that was really good and um I caught six eels in the end I missed two and caught six so that was good towards the end of the day as well the eels started to come out turns out underneath that by burning bush with all those bees a lot of eels um but despite it being a hot day and being not catching the fish which I was hoping I'm pretty proud of myself, Piscatorial fans. Um, the chap who was on my lake, lovely chap, really good angler as well, blanked. Didn't catch a single fish all day. Eight hours he was there, bless him. The ten or so carp anglers that rocked up mid-afternoon, blanked. Every single one of them. So I was the only fisherman in the whole venue who caught fish. I actually caught quite a lot of fish, really, when it comes down to it. So, yeah, forgive me if I feel a little bit sort of big-headed about it, but I'm pretty happy with my decisions today and, and how I fished. Um, you know, some days you go fishing and you think, oh, I'm fishing like a real plonker today. <laughs> and I'm, That's why I'm not catching anything. But I fished hard today, and I think I fished well. And um, luckily... Um, I came up with the trophy at the end of it. So those carp weren't weren't feeding at all, and, and I suspect, though I don't know, that a lot of the reason I wasn't catching a lot of the other fish was because of the carp spawning. I mean, when there's free carp eggs laying around the place to eat, why would you bother with a maggot, honestly? Anyway, I have been the passionate piscator. You can like this one. You can go back to all my other videos and like them give them a watch give them a like please subscribe it really helps oh i suppose i better tap in the numbers to undo this gate um <laughs> try and figure out what it was hopefully that's it open electric gate that was a bit of help. if i pressed the green button wouldn't it it really would help look at this ah oh. Automation is the future of all fisheries, guys. Again, like, subscribe. Oh, I can't do my wavy thing. I'm holding all my junk in my hand. Hang on. Let me get some cow parsley in the background. <laughs> Join me again next time. Bye!